Hi there, I'm Nicola Osborne. I am the social media officer for Adina, and I'm also amplifying the event, which is why I'm looking at the front at the moment. Um, I'm going to be talking a bit about repositories and social media. Well, I'm a bit of an interloper, because obviously I work in social media and not in repositories usually. Um, so, I'm waiting for my really bad analogy to come round. Hey! Um, so I think repositories are a little bit like the fringe. There's a lot of stuff... It's very diverse. It's very hard to work out what you might as well look at if you're a user just trying to find something that might be useful to your work or something that might be interesting. Um, it's a bit confusing. It's not clear what everything is. It's a bit uber niche. Um, some of it looks like rubbish in the repositories <laughs> just occasionally. Um, and apologies to anyone who may know anybody involved in this fringe show. Um, so we need to find ways of making it more accessible to people. And although there's lots of talk about um, repositories being well-designed and tested with academic users, I'm just trying to give a social media outward user kind of spin. So if you don't know what you're looking for, even the search and browse list on repositories can be really confusing. Big hierarchical trees of subject headings often. Um, the search requires you to get the title right. We're not brilliant at fuzzy searches in a lot of them. So... How do we find out about stuff? In, in the fringe, and I'm going to get in a second, yeah, we tr rely on trusted recommendations. Uh, we rely on performance using on telly. Uh, we rely on serendipitous discoveries. So when Neil Gaiman tells us to go and see a show, we might do. Um, and that kind of recommendation, personal recommendation, is a very powerful tool to getting things seen. So in the fringe, that's why some shows are always sold out and some are never going to get an audience member. But the same is true of scholarly publications. We all know there are superstar academics who people will go straight to to look at their papers, and an awful lot of other academics who would love to get more people reading their stuff. So I wanted to think about how we can help people into finding that fantastic material in the repository um, using social media. But if we just add in the social media buttons, is that going to make the difference? Because this is the easiest thing to do. Bang on a sharing button, and everyone can share their own stuff. But they have to know it's there to start with. So... Um, we need people who've placed their articles, their data into our repositories to actually be the first people to share their data. Um, we need that sharing to be really visible. I'm going to say that YouTube is a repository. I'm expecting to get heckled during lunch. Um, <laughs> but sharing is really visible here. It's really prominent. When you're on that page, it's really clear that you can share that stuff with people and you can comment and you can rate it. I'm not sure if we want to rate our papers in our repositories, but it might get some really interesting discussion going. Um, and so I want to think about repository managers and people who are writing materials that are in those repositories as ambassadors, hence the Ferrero Rocher, ambassadors reception. Um, so they should be out there sort of pitching their stuff, and we need to make it as easy as possible for them to say, I've created something wonderful, it is sitting in this repository, and you should go and have a look at it. This is a shameless plug. There's a giant plug in the background. Um, Media Hub, which is not quite a repository, has just added lots of sharing functionality. And I was really pleased to see um, Mark's charts of, sort of what's popular and how much usage things are getting. Because I think part of making people find content they don't know about is to highlight the stuff that's doing well already and look at how we can learn from that. So if something's doing really well, why has it got on there? So part of using social media is identifying the audience. If we know we want to get attention on a particular set of researchers, we need to know who the audience is going to be, what our goals are, why you want them to find it, and what do they do, what do they need, where do they hang out. Um, we need to be part of the discussion around that stuff in our repository. Um, possibly not with a cat in charge. Um, so we need to be going out there and seeing, okay, people have come into our repository, let's look at that data from our log files maybe and see where they came in from, and if we can really capitalise on that for another author who needs a lot more attention. Um, because we need to build impact stories. So lots of mention of the refs gone on. This is the part three, section three bit, which really talks about creating stories. And this chap in the crazy hat, he's involved in Bright Club, which is a sort of live stand-up for researchers, which takes place in London, is about to start up in Edinburgh. That's a good storytelling thing, but that's not a thing that's easily captured for the ref. Um, comments, case studies, community interest. This stuff you can pick up out on the on the social web, on blogs, on Twitter, on YouTube. So we need to think about how we can integrate some of that stuff back into the repository. So do we feed that stuff in? Do we just make sure the URL that's used is always the one to the repository rather than perhaps to one of the journal publishers? There are a couple of really interesting projects looking at how you combine social metrics with traditional metrics. Um, so you have the Beyond Impact project and the Altmetrics project. They're both looking at ways in which you can combine citations, um, tweets of articles, all that kind of stuff together 
to see if we can find out which research are actually doing the really important work, not necessarily the most well-known work. Um, and there are always new opportunities and threats. So this is uh, not my Google Scholar citation page, because I don't have enough citations for it to be interesting. But um, that of Jane Tinkley wrote a great post about this uh, new tool. Um, this is a really good opportunity. This is a researcher building their own profile quickly on the web, raising the profile of the institution, but it's also on someone else's site. And it seems sort of longer lasting, perhaps, than the profiles we have in our own repositories because it moves with them for institution. So perhaps we should make it easy. Perhaps we should pull in profile data from social sites like you would if you were signing up to a Facebook, a Twitter. We, maybe we should look and say, actually, it looks like these are also your publications. Let's pull those into your institutional profile page. And maybe we could build on some of this sort of uh, functionality that's in other social web things. So regular collaborators could be shown. You could search people who work together. Uh, maybe suggest people you should be working with next in our repositories, because we know people have worked with. We can look at the papers that we through the collaborators before. We can think about innovative ways to explore the data. So there's huge potential for social media data and tools um, to help repositories surface what's there and promote what's there. And if, it seems a bit scary if any of you are really new to social media, which I don't think anyone in the room probably is, but if they, if they would like some advice, we have some good social media guidelines at Adina, which I have lots of copies of down there. Um, so, social media for the win. <laughs> and that's my wee little bit. Thank you very much.